It's that time of year, Christmas. And what would it be without Christmas crackers? There's a million ways to make your own Christmas crackers at home, but we want to take a look at how they were made in the past. Of course, they were handmade, and we might learn a tip or two by looking at it. First, we want to list the materials used to make the cracker. A 2x4 inch mailing tube, wrapping paper, a cracker snap, which is what makes it sound when you snap the cracker, paper, gelatin paper, which is that semi-transparent coloured paper, curling ribbon, and you will need scissors or a cutter or a scalpel, glue, and then just the perks to put inside the cracker, a tissue crown, a motto and some gifts. Here we go. First, they would count the paper sheets in order to make a vast quantity. An expert worker in cracker factories would assemble more than 1,000 each day. They would cut the sheets. Traditionally, it would be 12 inches in length and 7.5 inches in width. Then, they would take all the decorative papers, the wrapping paper and the gelatin paper, and put them through the nimble machine to create those dainty shapes. As probably you don't have this machinery at home, you can cut the zigzag shape using your scissors. And here comes the assembly. First, they would lay the 12 by 7.5 inch paper sheet on the working table. And they would create several layers of decorative paper for the outside of the cracker. Starting with the edges, three different layers of paper mache and gelatin paper. All of them with the dainty shapes mentioned before. Then, in the big space in the middle, a layer of thick wrapping paper and another one of gelatin paper. Finally, to finish the outside face of the cracker, two layers of decorative paper stripes, all of them glued up against each other. Next, they would flip it and glue the edges of the paper layers so that when rolling it all, it would stick nice and straight. Then, they would put the cracker snap along one of the sides of the inner bit. Put the motto in the middle and a small layer of paper to cover it, so that it was thick and strong. And here comes the trick. They would use a cylinder to roll it all, but this cylinder wouldn't stay inside. For you, this is a mailing tube. Now the mailing tube has to be cut into two pieces. The first one as big as two thirds of the whole tube, and the other one just a third of it. They would put the two tube parts together on top of the flat cracker and roll it all sticking the paper as they did it, so that it was even and straight. But next, they would hold the tube and bring the ribbon tightly in the junction between the large part and the small part of the mailing tubes. As they did this, they would push it down and twist it, and remove the small part of the tube. Like this, it would make a nice and even line along the junction. You can tie a nice lace with the ribbon. Now, they would flip the cylinder, it was the time to throw in the gifts and the tissue crown through the other end of the cracker. Then, they would use the rope or the ribbon to do the same push and twist at the other end of the cracker, as they got rid of the big part of the mailing tube. And that was it. Christmas crackers in the style of 1933. Merry Christmas!